Hello, everybody. Good morning and good afternoon, and welcome to the channel. Today, I want to show you this is from vice.com. And you can see here it says 90 year old ATT user pays for Wall Street Journal ad to tell CEO that his internet sucks. <laughs> An AT&T customer for life, Aaron Espet, Epstein, is angry that the company still can't provide his L Los Angeles address with anything faster than 3 megabits per second in 2021. This is written by Carl Bode, Bode February 5th, Friday, at 11.12 a.m. 90-year-old North Hollywood resident Aaron Epstein has been an AT&T customer since the 60s. He's been with the company so long, he witnessed the 1982 breakup of Ma Bell and watched as the telecom giant slowly but surely reconstituted himself. He even has a Pacific Bell email address, Oh, despite the brand being discontinued in 2020 in 2002. This week, frustrated by AT&T's longstanding failure to upgrade its sluggish DSL line, Epstein took out a quarter-page ad in the Wall Street Journal just to give AT&T CEO John Stanky a piece of his mind. And this is around, this is Ryu Narcity, however you pronounce his name. I mean, how upset one must be over slow home internet speed to pay for a personal quarter page national ad in print. Okay, here we go. This is what he wrote to Mr. John T. Stanky, CEO of AT&T. Dear Mr. Stanky, AT&T prides itself in electronic communications. Unfortunately for the people who live in Hollywood, California, AT&T is now a major disappointment. Many of our neighbors are the creative technical workers in Universal at, in uni, at, at Universal, one of those Disney Studios, and adjacent city of Burbank in our city. We need to keep up with current technology and have looked to AT&T supply us with fast, blah, blah, blah. The ad, first spotted on Twitter by Ars Technica, complains about AT&T's inability to provide anything faster than 3 megabits per second in 2021 Los Angeles. We need to keep up with current technology and have looked at AT&T supply as a fast internet service, he wrote. Yet, although AT&T is advertising speeds up to 100 megabytes per second for other neighborhoods, the fastest now available to us is only three megabits per second. In a phone interview, Epstein told Motherboard he's been at and customer for an entire lifetime and grew tired of the company's repeated failure to deliver. I've used Pac Bell telephone since I got my own phone number in 1960, he told us, told them. My family has had Bell service since I was born in 1930. Despite being one of the first Los Angeles upgrade DSL when it became available in the 90s, in the 90s, he's been waiting ever since for speed improvements that, despite persistent promises, never arrived. Your competitors now have speeds of over 200 MB megabytes per second, Epstein wrote. Why is AT&T, the communications company, treating us so shabby in North Hollywood? The answer isn't complicated. This is what U.S. telecom monopolies do. And with the occasional exception, the U.S. government generally lets them. For decades, AT&T has been repeatedly accused of failing to meaningfully upgrade its aging DSL network to fiber, especially in lower income and mar marginalized communities. Existing customers also frequently complain that AT&T often fails to promptly repair its DSL. That line of fall in disrepair. Last October, AT&T stopped selling DSL entirely. While it's a company's prerogative to shift its business focus, AT&T receives countless billions in tax breaks, regulatory favors, and taxpayer subsidies for fiber upgrades that often never arrive. During the Trump era, AT&T received an estimated 42 billion tax break. The company claimed would result in thousands of new high-paying jobs, a major boost in network investment. Instead, unions say the company laid off more than 42,000 workers in just three years and reduced overall network investment in 2021. In 2020, 2020. AT&T also promised a boost in investment and employment numbers after Trump FCC gutted net neutrality. Promises that also failed to materialize once the task was completed. In a statement to Motherboard, AT&T insisted it hasn't shirked on network investment in the Los Angeles area. We continually enhance and invest our wireless and wireline networks, 
the company said, we have invested more than $3.1 billion in our Los Angeles area networks from 17 to 19. According to a recent study by the telecom sector's biggest union, only 14.93 million of the 52.97 million households in AT&T's 21 state wireline service have access to fiber service. AT&T told Motherboard it has reached out to Epstein to see what can be done. And while Epstein confirmed the Motherboard that he's been contacted by several AT&T executives in the wake of the ad, he said he's not holding his breath. That's why that's what they've been telling him for years, last five years, instead of AT&T's promises that he'd look into the problem. What gets his goat is he's been getting small snail mail advertising the faster speed. When I call him, they say it's not available. AT&T isn't alone in refusing to upgrade or constantly repair America's aging DSL lines. Numerous U.S. phone companies like Frontier, Windstream, and CenturyLink have largely scaled back residential broadband ambitions, usually to focus on far more profitable efforts like business class service or wireless video advertising. As a result, companies like Comcast and Charter Spectrum have enjoyed a growing monopoly over fixed line broadband access in the U.S., virtually resulting in virtually no real competition at faster speeds. That in turn results in higher prices, body upgrades, and the kind of terrible customer service telecom giants have been ridiculed for. Epstein told, told them he pays 18 to 110 every month for two voice lines and his DSL connection, which provides speeds of three megabytes per second downstream sometimes. More often, it tops around 1.5 to two megabits per second, he says, making it unusual, unstable, unusable for many things. FC hoped that his $1,100 ad would finally end his wait for better broadband. I put the ad in the Dallas edition of the Wall Street Journal where the head office of AT&T is. And, also, and I also put it in the New York City edition because that's where the investors are. Investors, as it turns out, haven't been particularly happy with AT&T either. AT&T faced a recent investor revolt for the company's massive debt load acquired after the company spent only $200 billion over a five-year period to merge with TV and Time Warner. AT&T's goal is to make inroads in the TV sector has been losing TV subscribers hand over fist and is now exploring selling DirecTV at a massive loss. <laughs> The other thing that gets his gets him upset is that AT&T is making investments in motion picture production and direct TV where they're basically a communications company, Epstein said. Cobbler, stick to thy last, he added. Granted, not every customer can afford to run an ad in a major paper to grab AT&T's attention. Marginalized communities in cities like Detroit and Cleveland have also complained about AT&T's spotty upgrades for the better part of the last decade with little to show for it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that, and um, like, com like, dislike, or comment on that video, and we hope that you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Goodbye. Bang.